we're looking at the most expensive Animal Crossing items, the rarest Animal Crossing items, the most expensive houses in Animal Crossing history. What's the most expensive individual thing you can spend money on? Hi, my name's Rocket Elijah, and we're a relatively newer Animal Crossing channel, but we try to do a deep dive into the universe and lore of Animal Crossing. We try to look at other things that other channels maybe don't, so if you're new, maybe subscribe. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and jump into this. Because oh boy, there's like 20 years of Animal Crossing history. There's a lot to cover. Now let's go ahead and start things off by looking at the GameCube version of Animal Crossing. Things were just a whole lot simpler back in these days. If we're talking just about items you could outright buy, like which item would cost you the most amount of money, it would go to the R-Wing, which is interesting because that's a reference to another Nintendo title in Star Fox. But this thing retails for 25,600 bells. And if we're just looking at furniture from the original GameCube game, the next most valuable thing is the Hi-Fi Stereo for 24,000 bells, and then the black and white sets for chess pieces for the king and queen pieces, those being 23,200 bells. Now here's the thing, the original GameCube version of Animal Crossing actually has one of the rarest, most valuable things in all of Animal Crossing history. Don't worry, we'll circle back to this shortly, but I just want to point out the furniture items in later Animal Crossing games first because it's interesting to see what was more valuable than things like an R-Wing. Animal Crossing Wild World for the DS came out a couple years later, y'all remember it, right? This game actually introduced one of the most valuable furniture pieces that would continue to stay in the Animal Crossing franchise, the throne. It's a pretty fancy looking chair, but it was an 800,000 bell chair, and we all know from my 100 Days in Animal Crossing Wild World how hard it is to make bells in that game. So yeah, this was definitely a very expensive item. Wild World's second and third place don't even come close to reaching in the price that the throne is at 800k. You can get the white katana for 36,000 bells or the moon. Just yeah, have the moon. Throw it in your town if you want to. 32,000 bells, that's it. Now, Wild World did for a long time have a unique distinction, though, if we're talking about overall house prices. Because Wild World marked a shift in the franchise where for the first time all players in the town would live in the same house, the house would then be a lot bigger and everybody would share the debt. So if you were to fully upgrade your house with all of the extra rooms, get everything upgraded in size, just fully max it out, you were looking at 3.5 million bells, which was more than double what it cost in the GameCube version to pay off all of your debt. Matter of fact, in the Japanese exclusive Animal Forest E+, after you paid off your debt, you could then get a private island for 1 million bells, and that total cost is still less than the total cost of the Wild World house, by over a million bells still. Yeah, Wild World's house was just astronomically highly priced. Now, City Folk, on the other hand, kind of realized how crazy high the debt was in Wild World, and since this time around you didn't have to do roommates anymore, they dropped the price of the house a bit more, closer to the GameCube version, where this time the house was just 1.3 million bells after all the upgrades. New Leaf was interesting. You could add side rooms and expansions to the side rooms for significant amount of bells. So just to get like the basic house done, it wasn't all that much, but once you account for all of the little upgrades and there were a lot of little upgrades you could do in any order you wanted, New Leaf did end up coming out and knocking Wild World completely out of the park, though the house was substantially bigger in New Leaf. So New Leaf took the crown with 7.5 million bells to pay off your entire house, and then Animal Crossing New Horizons came out, and paying off your house wasn't actually more than New Leaf's house. Now, mind you, in New Horizons, you can't upgrade your side rooms to the 8x8 size that you could in Animal Crossing New Leaf, so New Horizons' grand total was less than the 7.5 million in New Leaf, but just 5.7 million in New Horizons. Though, if we account for the storage space upgrades that were added in various updates, you'd be able to upgrade your storage multiple different times for 500,000, 700,000, 900,000, and 1.2 million bells each, which if we account for storage space, then New Horizons now takes the throne as the most expensive house, though we're not really sure if we should count that since it technically doesn't do anything to the house. It's just like a storage option. Now, going back to Animal Crossing Wild World, there was one other little thing that was massively rare that everybody forgets. We're gonna talk about that one also. Just hang on, I'm keeping these special ones for a little bit later in the video and you'll see why. Animal Crossing City Folk was unique in introducing introducing a couple of series that to this day are still the most expensive furniture sets that have ever existed. For instance, Gracie, who is like the designer person who's super special, has some unique designer sets that go for a lot of money, like a Gracie shelf for 350,000 bells. There's also the gorgeous set with furniture ranging from around 300,000. And there's the princess set that has furniture in the 200,000s. It's actually crazy though.
how in some of these cases we can see furniture going for as high as 350k. Now, if we go to Animal Crossing New Leaf, these same furniture sets from Gracie were included in New Leaf as well, and their high price tag was not only included, but also they saw an increase in overall price where on average, all of the Gracie, Gorgeous, and Princess sets increased in price by around 60,000 bells. So now, things like the Princess Curio, which looks pretty cool, was 300,000 bells. Lovely. Also, there was this card wall clock, which was introduced specifically in Animal Crossing New Leaf, and it was 300,000 bells also. Here's the big thing. Animal Crossing Wild World introduced to date for regular items that you can acquire one of the most expensive items that would continue to exist in Animal Crossing moving forward. That would be the very special and very rare crown and royal crown, which were added into the game. Now, the crown sells for 1 million bells. You can get it at the Able Sisters. And the royal crown sells for 1.2 million bells. So that's a lot of bells. This is also something that specifically would carry over into Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, Animal Crossing New Leaf also had something a little bit interesting in the form of public works projects, which was essentially New Leaf's way of putting outdoor furniture in the game. It was a little primitive back then, but hey, at least you could finally put things outside for the first time and decorate your town in a new way. Obviously, in New Horizons, you're just free to do it however you want, but New Leaf, they were slowly rolling out this feature, and it's cool that you could put some cool things on the outside. Now, the thing was, in most cases, these items were incredibly expensive, though. Way more expensive than what a regular furniture piece would be. Though, the most expensive out of all of the public works projects that you could do in Animal Crossing New Leaf was building the Eiffel Tower. Wow, who would have thought you could just throw that right up there in your town? 700,000 bells, which is a lot, of course, but surprisingly lower than for whatever reason I thought it would be to build the Eiffel Tower, especially when things like a crown goes for a million bells. Okay, but now let's look at Animal Crossing New Horizons at the individual items first. One of the newer items introduced in the 2.0 update was the the yacht, which you can buy for 260,000 bells. And if you're a newer player, that's quite a lot of bells. Now, of course, a lot of experienced players have already maxed out the ways of earning bells. They used all of the strategies. 260,000 bells is just a little drip in the bucket. But yeah, get a bunch of these and throw them on your island and hey, you can look pretty cool. Now, there's two types of cars in Animal Crossing New Horizons in the 2.0 update. There's this like beat up car that's not worth that much money or doesn't cost that much money to buy. But if you get the slightly larger Larger, better looking luxury car, it's gonna cost 300,000 bells, which is an insane amount of bells. This next one, we actually didn't know that it was as expensive as it was until we tried to buy it in the Happy Home Paradise DLC. But yeah, the throne, 800k. And when we first realized this was added into the game, it was only showing up in the Happy Home store and catalog, and it had a ridiculous amount of pokey required to buy it. And we'd been saving up for it, trying to figure out what we needed to do to get this throne and then one day just came up for sale in Nook store for only 800,000 bells but for us it was easier to just spend the 800,000 bells to get this. Okay now we're heating up with some wearable items but the crown in Animal Crossing New Horizons is worth 1 million bells. You know just go ahead and give these out to your villagers and hope that they wear them and they don't just like put it on display in their house or something. And then the number one most valuable item that you can buy in Animal Crossing New Horizons the royal crown which goes for a whopping 1.2 million bells. But that's just scratching the surface when it comes to things that people purchase in Animal Crossing New Horizons because Animal Crossing New Horizons was the first game to really popularize trading villagers, especially since there wasn't any chance the villager will just randomly move away without you at least approving it ahead of time. So this ended up making villagers a heavily traded thing back when the game came out. And if you had a rare villager like Raymond, for example, a villager who was newly introduced in the game was a cat and also didn't have an amiibo card associated with it yet. Oh boy, were you sitting on a gold mine? People would pay millions and millions of bells for the chance to get Raymond to move into their town. Matter of fact, there were people even selling the villager for real money on eBay and other reselling type sites. Now, I do remember back in the day, he was worth around 20 million bells at minimum if you were trying to buy him directly with bells. Though, with the way that New Horizons kind of went, people were able to make 
make a lot of bells in different ways. And a lot of people playing the game ended up getting to the point where bells were just kind of disposable. And the real thing that people were hunting after were something that's a little harder to get, which are Nook Mile tickets. So sure, 2,000 Nook Miles can be turned into a single Nook Mile ticket, and you could then either go villager hunting, get materials and all of that. But this ended up being kind of a secondary currency in the kind of underground market of Animal Crossing. So you could essentially buy things by trading Nook Mile tickets for them. And someone like Raymond would go for 500 Nook Mile tickets easily, which mind you, 2,000 Nook Miles per ticket, which is quite a bit to have to try to buy and print out. Nowadays, Raymond has an Amiibo card out. There's less interest overall in Animal Crossing when it comes to like trading villagers. And it says on Nookazon his average value is now evaluated around 5 million bells, which still is incredibly high. Back when the 2.0 update came out and new villagers were introduced, there was also a spike in the villager Shino, who was newly introduced. But the interest once again has kind of settled out with an average being around 4 million bells or so if you wanted to get Shino outright with bells. But that's not all when it comes to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, New Horizons, for the most part, when it comes to things like bugs and fish that you can catch and then sell to make a profit, it's mostly just the evolution of what has existed in the previous Animal Crossing titles. So we can kind of talk about all of the fish and insects by specifically talking about Animal Crossing New Horizons, more or less. But let's say it's time for you to make some bank and you want to become a pro fisherman and just make the most amount of money fishing it up. When it comes to the fish that are worth the most amount of bells if you were to sell them to either Nook or CJ. Specifically for this video, we'll talk about the base Nook prices, not CJ's inflated prices. If you catch a golden trout, you can actually sell that for 15,000 bells, which is impressive until you find out that when it comes to fish, there's actually a six-way tie for the fish that's worth the most amount of bells that you can possibly sell. Besides just the golden trout, there's the string fish, the colacanth. I hope I'm saying that right, but look at that thing. You can catch a great white shark and it's still only 15k. There's also the Dorado and the Barrel Eye, which are all also worth 15,000 bells if you sell them. Now, insects, on the other hand, are really interesting. For the longest time, I don't know why I thought this, but I just assumed that tarantulas and scorpions were the most valuable insect because we used to make so many bells way back in the early days, just making these islands set up to manipulate the spawns so that more often than not, you only get tarantulas and scorpions spawning, and they were worth 8,000 bells each, just base price. This is a great way to initially get some bells in there. And yeah, they are a great value, don't get me wrong, but there are some insects that are worth more than the tarantulas and scorpions. A three-way tie, actually, if you look at the golden stag, the giraffe stag, or you catch a horned Hercules, these are all worth 12,000 bells. And I should have remembered that because catching these types of insects was a really big deal in New Leaf to earn bells. I kind of forgot about it because, I mean, look at this, tarantulas, they're running around and stuff. Now, not something that too many people have actually done, but if you're into diving in Animal Crossing, not too many people actually take advantage of this and swim around outside their islands and catch stuff. But if you can find yourself the Gigas Giant Clam, it's worth 15,000 bells, which is pretty cool. And since we're also on the topic of not only things that are worth a lot of money, we also are on the topic for some of the rarest items across all of Animal Crossing. We kind of need to talk about flowers because Animal Crossing New Horizons went big when it went to things like flowers. Now, reselling rare flowers can actually be worth quite a bit. My wife, Sandy, and I actually figured out that people were looking for random flowers online back in the day and we made bank just breeding flowers and delivering them to people's islands in exchange for bells or Nook Mile tickets. Now it's interesting, there are a lot of different flowers, but what we found were some of the flowers that are thought of being super rare aren't actually as rare as some people think they are. Oftentimes we see blue roses being hyped up because they are really challenging to acquire. I totally understand why. If you don't know, for blue roses, you need to go to a store and buy red and white roses and then you need to breed a pink rose and this specific pink rose you breed may or may not have the genes needed where if you breed it with a yellow store-bought rose you can get a red rose. Now this is a special red rose it's different from the normal red roses though it looks exactly the same but then if you breed two of these red roses bam you get a blue rose. The initial process of getting a blue rose is incredibly challenging however once you have a few blue roses this hype kind of wears off because you can just take the blue roses and breed them together and get more blue roses. So we were surprised when we did this quite a bit, we didn't see all that 
that high of a demand for the blue roses compared to some of the other roses that people just went nuts over. And we're talking about gold roses. These things used to sell off the hook. Like, I can see why. Not only can you pluck these and make a ton of bells every few days just by selling the petals, and then your flower will grow the petals back and you can make more bells. They're just a little bit tricky to get. First, you need two store-bought red roses. You have to breed them together and you have a 25% chance of getting a black rose. Then you have to breed two black roses together by watering them with gold cans. And then there's a slight chance you'll get gold roses. We found out though, if you have multiple people come over and water your black roses with a gold watering can, your chances increase substantially. So we would just make these huge gardens in my wife's island and then bam, we would all come over, we water the plants and we would have a ton of gold roses. And honestly, these do look really cool and they're worth a ton of money and we're in really high demand. And we also just had a lot of fun growing these. The cool thing is nowadays, if we're ever low on bells, we can just pluck the flowers and sell them to Nook. And a few days later, they grow back. Or of course, we could always go back to our old ways, selling on the dark black market of Nookazon. But hey, it was a lot of fun. Then of course, the rarest flower of them all are definitely the lilies of the valley. Now these things you can only get on your island if you have a five-star island for multiple days in a row and they can randomly spawn apparently on a cliff. Now the thing about them is these lilies are not only rare, but you can't ever really find them in bulk. You rarely ever find someone with a massive lilies of the valley garden just because of how long it takes to acquire an individual lily and you can't breed them and duplicate them like you can the other flowers. So instead, if people are selling them online, they usually are selling them individually on sites like Nookazon and while while it seems like things can fluctuate based on supply and demand, on average, Nookazon has this listed at around 112,000 bells per flower. And obviously you might get a better deal if you paid with Nook Mile tickets instead, but still, if there is a high demand, it's a good time to sell them, but also you aren't gonna find like someone just selling 30 of them outright most of the time. Okay, another way obviously you can make money is with the whole turn up game. Now that's not really the point of this video. We're trying to look at individual items and individual things you can do to to earn rare items and what those are, which leads us to the two items we skipped over when we were talking about each game individually. First, Wild World. We talked about this in the past, but in Wild World, there was this like mysterious town known as the Boondocks that you could donate money to. And you would slowly hear about how the people that lived in that town, their life was getting better or something, but you were expected to continue to pay more and more bells over time. Now, the thing is, if you paid the maximum amount and you donated 6.4 million bells, this is a lot of bells, to this mysterious location you never hear of, you get rewarded with a rainbow feather that you can wear. Yeah, 6.4 million bells for this thing. I don't think too many people ever actually went for this or got it legitimately, but hey, it was a thing that people did. Then on the flip side, Animal Crossing all the way back on the GameCube has an item where if your savings account reaches 1 billion bells legitimately, or like 999 million, 900 thousand999 you get the point you get rewarded with a post office replica that you can put in your house now I know technically you're not buying this, but if you realize the mass amount of effort that it would take to gain 1 billion bells, even if you were the greatest turn up flipper in the world, 1 billion bells legitimately is absolutely absurdly high. Matter of fact, up until 2020, there had been no recorded history of any player ever legitimately getting this item without using hacking or modding the bells into their game or doing some sort of cheating trick. This was the case up until March 6, 2020, just before New Horizons released, where Animal Crossing player Brian MP16 actually went ahead and became the first player ever to grind out getting 1 billion bells in their Animal Crossing game just to get this post model legitimately. And that is incredibly impressive. There's a really good 39 minute long video explaining the process that he went through to get the billion bells in Animal Crossing. And he did a lot of it while live streaming, which is really cool. So if you guys wanna check that video out, there'll be a link in the description down below but before you would go or anything, make sure you guys subscribe here first. We just hit 30,000 subscribers. It's been super exciting to get to cover Animal Crossing content like this. So if you enjoy the content we've been putting out here, uh, maybe watch another video or maybe make sure you're subscribed. That's it for today though. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time with a brand new video.